The Nigerian Labour Congress has debunked speculations that it might back down on its proposed industrial action slated Wednesday um, nationwide. It said the only reason it would shelve the strike is when the federal government of Nigeria, the National Petroleum Corporation Limited NNPCL, will do the needful by returning to status quo on the fuel subsidy removal. And also declared the position in a statement by Benson Upa, head of the Information and Public Affairs, on Sunday. Now, it described the report as laughable and a desperate attempt by enemies of the people to polarize the Nigeria Labour Congress along ethnic or religious lines on an issue with the national spread. Recall that the president, Bola Tinubu, had during his inaugural speech declared that the era of subsidy for petroleum products was gone, a development that had had a rippling effect on Nigeria's polity since May 29, 2023. Joining us to discuss the legalities around this uh, proposed strike action is Professor Richard Wokocha. He is a professor of law, River State University in Port Harcourt. And of course, still joining us is Barrister Jide Ulogu. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Yes, uh, I'll start with you, Professor Wokocha. Um, Mr. Ulogu had given us a, a brief background, but then there is, of course, an order now that is um, one way or the other going to make the NLC shelve this industrial action. And there have been people who are saying that if they do go on this strike, it would be illegal. Talk to us about it. Hello? Yes, I can hear you. Go ahead. Uh, okay, okay. Well, uh, I, I just uh, uh, got to the end of that information that there's been a ruling to that effect. And... Uh, if there is a ruling, then uh, that would be a different thing. Um, but as, as to timing, there may also be the issue of whether sufficient notice has been given under the law uh, before such strike is declared. Uh, remember that this is an entirely new issue uh, on the subsidy. So it's not like a, a, a pending strike or a strike that has been on that was suspended, in which case it can be renewed at some point. So. I think those may be the issues playing around the issue of illegality concerning the strike. Now, one of the let's look at some of the um, the, the demands of labour. Labour is talking about government returning to status quo um, on the issue of fuel subsidy. Um, they are also the TUC, as we speak, are still in meeting with the federal government, um, trying to come to some agreement of sorts. Um, we do not know where that's headed. Um, but then, of course, let's not forget about the fact that they're still dealing with the issue of minimum wage. And in today's Nigeria, and I'm talking about today, as at today, uh, the minimum wage of the average Nigerian uh, government worker cannot uh, um, buy them fuel for more than two days. So um, if we're reviewing um, you know, the minimum wage, what exactly are we reviewing it to? And can government afford to pay minimum wage? even for the average person who's not necessarily working for government. But with the situation we have on our hand, uh, it's no longer a question of whether we show renew uh, and whether government can pay. Uh, there is no way you can be talking of the drastic effect of the removal of um, uh, subsidy um, as the situation stands now, and uh, you are conceiving at all uh, by any stretch of imagination that things can stay the way they are with respect to minimum wage. That certainly will not work. So we must come to the realization that governments must be able to pay, and we must talk about a reasonable minimum wage now, even beyond what we were talking about before. Uh, because you are no longer dealing with a situation where the cost of living is uh, at the point where 30,000 uh, naira per month was something considerable, which what we are dealing with now, the effect of removal of subsidy and its um, uh, usual global effect on the marketplace. What you are looking at now is one that 30,000 Naira will not be able to take the average worker to work even for uh, two weeks. So we must uh, deal with the issue of um, increasing minimum wage to a reasonable amount that will be. Uh, Professor Wakata, I think that you're frozen. L let me just um, quickly toss to Barista Logo. Be able to at least allow the worker come to work. Okay, let me go to Barista Logo. Barista Logo, what would be 
a reasonable minimum wage in today's Nigeria, especially for government workers, because of course companies also have um, their work cut out for them. Literally, everybody has their plate full. Whether the person who's running a private business, um, the tiny shop owner, the tiny business owner, the barber, the salonist, everyone who has to buy fuel to fuel their business, to power their businesses. And let's not um, also forget, we have a very epileptic power supply in this country. So again, um, these are some of the things that you need to consider when you want to talk about the best, best kind of, or the best amount to consider as minimum wage. So on the fuel subsidy removal and of course the planned strike by the Nigeria Labour Congress, I'm still being joined by Professor Richard Wokocha and uh, Jide Ologun. Professor Wokocha, I was asking a question, what would be the best amount for, to consider as minimum wage? Uh, and considering some of the things that I asked earlier on, the questions about um, the epileptic power supply, the fact that small businesses are powered by also um, petrol, um, what would be the amount that anyone would take home that would be able to take them home in this instance? Well, I, I am afraid that uh, we cannot uh, be talking of anything less than 70,000 Naira now for minimum wage. Um, even 70,000 Naira is on the hope that uh, government is going to have some... Professor Wakata, we had lost you for a few seconds. We could barely hear you. I see. Yes. I see, but I can hear you clearly from my end. All right, go ahead again. We take that uh, response yeah. again. Yeah, I, I was saying uh, that we, we cannot be talking of anything less than 70,000 now. Um, we are gone far beyond the stage where 50,000 was a consideration. Um, with what we have on our hand now, even the 70,000 uh, is on the ground that we are hopeful that with what government will save from the subsidy removal, that they will be able to provide palliatives that may cushion some of the effects uh, on the marketplace and on the uh, the average worker. I keep asking uh, what these palliatives are, and then nobody's able to give me a proper answer. What palliatives oh, yeah, can yeah, the government yeah, yeah, of the yeah, day pro provide yeah, for yeah. us in the space of a month or two? Because until those palliatives are put in place, the average Nigerian is going to keep suffering and squeezing you know, in the interim. So what, what are these palliatives I agree, that you propose? I agree completely. There has been talks about um, some kind of provision relating to transport. So if you have, uh, definitely that will not cover our routes. Uh, but if you have um, a transport system that has uh, something for workers, that workers can attend uh, with the evidence of being uh, workers, um, that they can attend or taxpayers can attend showing evidence of taxpayers, for instance, something that can take them to work at less than what the market value will be at the moment, that will be a palliative that will be useful to uh, ensuring that the worker can cope with the amount uh, that is eventually paid. Assuming we are working with 70,000 Naira, uh, because the cost of transport is going to increase, it's going to deal with the cost of buying things in the market. But I think that as the government settles down, they should be able to also go into negotiation or discussion with those who are involved to see that the increase in price is not done uh, at an unreasonable level, but at a level that will reflect the reality of the effect of change in um, uh, in uh, the price of petrol. Uh, we've, we've had this in the past, uh, where those efforts were made, and some of those things were brought down to a reasonable level. Uh, so this is what uh, will need to be done for whatever is eventually agreed on as minimum wage to be able to have effect on uh, a positive effect on the worker, the average worker. That we also have to consider that this is the more reason why labor must go into discussion and negotiation with the government. They must be able to agree on palliatives that make sense. And until they come to that satisfactory agreement, uh, I think labor will have to hold their gun. But it is necessary, absolutely necessary, that labor represents the people, the average citizen of Nigeria, and goes into discussion to ensure that they come up with something reasonable. Otherwise, we'll just be hearing palliatives and we'll have no hold or no grip on uh, the exact thing we are talking about. Great. Uh, Barcelona, you're back. Let me ask quickly before we wrap things up here. Um, what, what do you think employers of labor will have to deal with now? Because going forward, a lot of people are 
unable to make it to work, some can afford it, some can not afford it. And this is just the beginning of the, you know, the month. And uh, before the month goes into, uh, the divides into half, maybe their, their salaries are all gone. Um, what do you think that these employers of labor should be considering now to ameliorate the sufferings of their workers? And do we see job cuts happening? Do we see, um, and what should be the considerations for, uh, are they going to be considering work from home three days? I mean, I think Quire State Government has um, implemented a three-day working week and then a cost. So it means that you work for three days and then take two days off and work from home. Is this something that we can um, explore nationwide? Wonderful. You know, and I think our experience during the COVID-19 lockdown comes to bear here. You have to create the hybrid uh, working template concerning your HR. Because like I was saying the other time, the minimum wage is just a tiny aspect of the matrix that we need to manage in this crisis. Because the moment you even increase the minimum wage, let's assume you even have the money to increase it. The market woman who is not in the you know, formal sector also wants to increase her own take from the increased minimum wage. And already we have not been able to tame the foreign exchange flight. So we have several issues. In fact, as of today, our country has the highest uh, rate of uh, aviation funds that are stocked in the nation. So, and again, one big palliative measure indirectly that can help us right now solve our problems going forward is to cut down on the cost of government. You know, I thought of it. If, for instance, somebody who was filling his car with 10,000 naira, needs 30,000 naira to fill it. How much does the minister, the federal minister, uh, who used to fill his car with 75,000 naira need to fill those vehicles, all those convoys that they fly around? So it's going to be, you know, a, an engagement that we involve, not just the citizens alone tightening their belts until their waste disappear, but the government also cutting down on wastages, you see, and someone already suggested having a single camera uh, legislative body at the national level. Why do we have a bicameral legislature? The, the House of Senate, and uh, House of Senate has one around nine senators. And you can imagine how much we need to maintain just one senator. The House of Representatives has 360 representatives. So these are issues. Then we begin to look at clamping down on the oil team. Section 15, subsection 5 of the Nigerian Constitution 1999 as amended says that the government shall abolish, you know, corrupt practices and abuse of office. So how do we deal with these oil thieves so that is stop stealing our uh, oil? How do we revamp our refineries? The GMD of NNPC Limited has promised that one of the refineries should come upstream by next year, another by year 2025, so how do we stop exporting our crude oil and importing the part of the finished products back to the country? And again, how do we stop the foreign countries, the neighboring countries that feed sadly and wickedly on our resources in the nation? Right now, they have been forced to adjust their own farm price over there too because smugglers are busy smuggling their products. So we need a holistic good governance approach to this. The matters are numerous, but... Like those who are arguing that this is not the right time. I think, the, according to the Chinese maxim, the best time to have planted the tree was 20 years ago. The next best time is now. So I wish the government and the NLC and the TUC and all of them the wisdom to really negotiate bringing Nigeria out of the wood. I mean, it's so sad where we are right now. We cannot continue to pay lip service to our crisis. Well, we can just but hope that uh, the right things will be done. But I want to say thank you. Professor Richard Wakacha is a professor of law at the River State University in Port Hackett. And Jido Logo is a legal practitioner. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for speaking with us on this. Thank you. God bless Pleasure. Nigeria. Thank you. Well, that's it on the show tonight. We'll be back tomorrow talking for development. Don't forget, you can, of course, um, play catch up on all our previous episodes on Plus Politics. Just go to Plus TV Africa on our YouTube page. Like, subscribe and follow all our programs. I'm Mary Anakun. Have a good evening.